Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm super excited to be with you today. I wanted to unravel, unravel? Why do I keep saying unravel? I wanted to, Jesus. I'm gonna need a thesaurus. Unravel. I can't think of a word. This is pathetic. Hey everyone, Mike here. Super excited to be with you today. I'm gonna unravel. Ugh! Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm super excited to be with you today to share with you a new project that I'll be undertaking in this episode, and that is running ESXi on ARM. You might know ARM as just another CPU architecture, but to me, when I hear ARM, I think of the Raspberry Pi. VMware announced this support for ESX running on the Raspberry Pi at VMworld in the form of a fling. If you're not familiar with a fling, basically it's code that you can download and you can use, but it's not officially supported. So if you run into trouble, or you run production workloads on it, VMware is pretty much gonna they're probably not gonna help you. Now that said, I don't even know if this Raspberry Pi kit is any good, I guess we'll find out, but by the end of the video, you and I will know the answer to that. So in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing it, I'll be setting up the Raspberry Pi, and I'll be running that ESXi ARM fling on the Raspberry Pi. So the goal is at the end of this video to actually be able to see this Raspberry Pi as an ESXi host in my vCenter. So let's get to the unboxing and then we'll get to the configuration after that. Cue awesome music in three, Two, one. down some of these components that came with the kit. First, let's start with the Raspberry Pi itself. This is again a Raspberry Pi 4. The big thing here, this one has eight gigs of RAM, which is the fully loaded configuration. So this should be plenty of power to run ESXi on ARM. One of the things that I noticed, I have some of the older Pis. I think I have a Pi 2 or, or maybe a 3. I, I think it's a 3B maybe, 2B. I, anyway, one of the things that's different if you're coming from working with those Pis is that the power port on this is actually USB-C. So the next piece that it actually comes with is the uh, USB-C charger. And it actually also comes with some heat sinks as well, which I will be installing because I'm definitely concerned about heat being generated because I'm really gonna push this thing. Another thing it comes with, just kind of standard, a case, probably a nice idea. I don't like handling the, the Pi on its own anyway, so that will be good. Um, it also comes with the micro SD card as well. It comes with a fan, a switch. So one of the challenges, this seems like something simple, but on the old Pies, I always got frustrated. I'd have to unplug it from the wall to shut them down. So this is kind of nice. I don't know if I'll use it, but uh, it is a nice touch. And then the last thing, which is actually the last two things, uh, the first is a micro SD card reader. I think this is very understated. Before I actually filmed this video, I was on Amazon thinking I was gonna have to order one of these and lo and behold, it comes with one. So that's nice. And then the last piece of the kit is actually an HDMI cable so that we can plug it into a monitor. We also have a, a user guide, but who uses those anyway? Shit, I might, I might actually need that. And for the remainder of this video, I'm gonna take all this stuff upstairs to my office and then I'll get everything set up and plugged up and we'll start doing the build. So I'll see you there. Assembling this kit is super easy and I actually really like how everything is included. In this case, we've got a Raspberry Pi 4 here, our preloaded micro SD card, which saves us the headache of figuring out how to boot our Pi. And then we also have a fan, a power supply, and of course our case. One thing I do wanna point out about this case is it's actually a three-part case. To install the Pi, you wanna disassemble the case place it on the bottom, which you can identify because it doesn't have an indentation for the fan. Now, once you've done that, you place the middle section over the Pi, being careful to make sure that you orient the case properly according to the Pi's shape so that you don't break anything. As the last step, you just simply snap on the lid and you're done. Now, I did wanna take a moment to show you how to set up the fan, and it's pretty easy. Basically, you're just going to orient it so it's on these plastic dowels, and then it'll just pop into place. From there, we can set the top aside, and we can take a look at the Pi and connecting those wires. Now, with your Pi oriented like mine is, you're gonna connect your red wire to pin number four, and your black wire to pin number six, which is the ground. 
I decided to show this diagram instead of actual video of me doing it because you can see it a lot more clearly. The kit comes with three heat sinks, so I went ahead and installed them. So hopefully you can see here, it's a little bit hard to see, but I've got heat sinks one, two, and three. I've got the large one over the CPU, and then I've got two and three installed directly next to it. So at this point, we're almost to the fun stuff. We're ready to set up our power. Just go ahead and plug in our USB-C. We can plug in now our HDMI cable to our monitor, and then we can also plug in our keyboard and our mouse. The last thing we'll want to do is make sure we install our preloaded Noobs micro SD card. If you're not familiar with this, it basically saves you a few steps of having to mess around with loading that SD card with the Pi software. This will just make sure that the boot process is super simple, which helps because quite honestly, the process of installing ESXi on the Pi is not exactly straightforward, but I'll get to that in a minute. So at this point, you should be pretty much ready to boot up your Raspberry Pi. If you got the kit that I got and you have the preloaded SD card with the Noobs software installed on it, you're pretty much ready to just boot up your Pi and select the very first option, which will boot you into the Raspberry Pi operating system. At that point, basically you're ready to follow along with the instructions that I'm about to show you. Now that said, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I looked for a bunch of blogs that detailed this process and I found one by Nico that is amazing. So as you see here, basically this post, he made this on October 7th. Um, Nico is a lead solutions engineer with VMware. Hats off to him. He made a fantastic blog here. If you follow this tutorial, you'll be perfect. Now there's a couple of very minor things I would change um, or maybe not change, but just strong recommendations I would made. So um, I, we've already gone kind of over what you need from the Raspberry Pi side of it. Now you will need a couple of USB installers. Technically you could probably make one work somehow, but I definitely recommend just getting two USB drives. I put a link down in the description to the ones I got. I got some, they're somewhere around here. I have some tiny little ones uh, that I believe are 32 gig, which is more than enough for this case. Basically you're gonna need one of them for the ESXi ISO for the installer, and then the other one you'll basically use as your target to actually install ESX onto. So technically you could get away with probably some like four or eight gigs more than likely, but that said, again, I found it actually easier to find 32 gig flash drives than I did eight gigs or four gigs. Now that said, if you go to this tutorial, which I'll, I'll put in the link, you're gonna need a keyboard and really this is kind of starting step one is where I'm leaving you off right now. So you get the Raspberry Pi plugged up, you boot up into noobs. At this point, you basically can start doing the UEFI setup on the SD card and it's all pretty straightforward. And one of the things I like about Nico's blog here is you can almost copy and paste just about everything from this blog and it will work perfectly. So I'm not gonna show you guys step by step because Nico already did a great job of that, but I will show you there's one thing in here I wanted to point out. So steps 1.2 and 1.3 can seem a little bit confusing. So basically here's how you do this. You download this Raspberry Pi firmware and also the UEFI firmware, and you're gonna download that onto your local laptop. This is not onto the Raspberry Pi. So in this case, Nico set it up so if you place those files in your desktop, then you can do everything from there and you can actually copy and paste pretty much everything from his blog straight into uh, your system and it'll all just work. Now for step one, four, basically you're gonna reformat that SD card as a FAT32 partition. This is a standard process. You can do this again, whether you're on Windows or Mac, it should be pretty straightforward. Now I will say that in his instructions, he does show that you need to gather the, basically the disk path of whatever that thumb drive is that you're trying to format. Um, basically, in this case, or I'm sorry, the uh, the SD card. But basically when you do that, the, the command that he uses here, he didn't actually show here, but it, on the Mac, it would be disk util. So that's all you have to do is disk util, and I believe it's list, and that will give you this output right here so you can identify that number here. So basically you'll do, for example, let's say in this case, his is disk two, so that would be this one right here. And then you can just use this as your, your partition, right? Or your uh, your path, rather, your disk path. Um, everything else here is pretty straightforward. I literally used everything here step by step. Uh, to literally copy and pasted everything here, nothing really major. The only thing I'll tell you is just check the commands before you issue them because some of these do have the uh, Nico's username for his local system. So you need to replace that obviously with your own username so that your path is correct. So for example, if you go down, let's see if we go down to the very bottom here, uh, let's see, right here. So this stuff right here, I literally copy and pasted this. I will say uh, I used unet boot in. 
Um, I downloaded that on my Mac and used that. Basically, all I did was downloaded it and I believe I moved it to my desktop. Um, and then from here, you just this is what I was talking about. You just need to make sure you specify your username and remove his. If you don't do that, you'll get some errors when you run these commands. And it can be confusing because some of them will work and some of them won't. The other thing I'll point out is that you need to check this ISO path and make sure that right here, he's got the ISO specified. Uh, but in my case, I downloaded the ISO obviously about a month after Nico posted this blog. So therefore my ISO path was different because I had downloaded a slightly different file name. So it was a minor release. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well, check that. At this point, the install is standard ESX pretty much if you follow the Nico's instructions. At the end, you'll basically have an ESX host. I was able to add it to vCenter without any problems. Everything pretty much seemed to work from there. So now looking back at the process, I will say if you have the kit and you have Nico's blog, you have everything you do, everything you need rather, to be able to do this successfully. If you don't have Nico's kit or Nico's blog, geez, I can't talk today. If you don't have Nico's blog and you don't buy the kit, you can absolutely still get through it but you definitely kind of need to piece things together and be a little more flexible. I preferred an out of the box approach. I wanted it to just work so I could get ESX working. And that's exactly what happened. I would say start to finish for this episode. It took me, I would say maybe an hour, hour and a half to get the Raspberry Pi fully up with ESX 7.0. And that was from the unboxing all the way to the actual setup. And I had no idea what I was doing. So it worked out really well. It was a really fun project. I don't know if I'll do more of them, but it is really cool to see in action. So that said, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you guys like the video. This was really a fun one to make. So definitely like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, share it with your friends. Until next time, take care.